Hey guys, welcome back to the next part of our series. Today we're going to continue with the Firefly. We're going to be working on textures, we're going to be preparing our character, and I'm going to be showing you some very nice tricks that we're going to be using in Substance Painter. But before we jump into that, I want to give you a very, very good news right here. We are offering a 90% discount code for our basic intro to Maya course. So if you've been wanting to learn Maya from scratch, like you, you're eager to learn how to animate, how to model, what UVs are about, how to do a nice render, dynamics even, this course is completely for you. This was recorded with Maya 2020. However, all of the tools that we recorded here are available for Maya 2022. So if you have the latest version of Maya, you're gonna be able to get absolutely the best value out of this. We're gonna be modeling low poly weapons for games. We're gonna be modeling subdivision elements for cinematics and commercials. We do a little bit of animation, we check a little bit of Bifrost, Dynamics, a Mash, there's a lot of things. We even go a little bit into Substance Painter. So again, if you've really wanted to learn the basics of Maya and you like my teaching style, you like the content that we share with you, then this is one of the best values out there. Uh, the course will have a 90% off with the promo code that's going to be down here in the comments. This will be only valid for the next five days, guys, five days only. So after that, the code's still going to be there. It's still going to work, but it's not going to have the 90% uh, discount. So make sure you make use of this uh, promo code right here and uh, join me for a lot of uh, good information in our Maya 2020 uh, for beginners course. Anyway, so let's now move on to our, let me close this real quick. Let me close this and let's go into Maya. So this is where we left off last time when we were working with our little um, uh, Firefly model, which is looking good. I'm going to turn off the light setup again with H just to hide everything. This image plane, we really don't need it anymore. So I'm just going to delete it right here. And uh, now it's time that we talk about UVs. So what are UVs? UVs are one of those things that people or my students usually struggle with. And the reason they struggle with them is they tend to be a little bit mysterious, like people don't really understand how, what they are or how they work. I'm going to be very, very, I'm going to explain this in a very, very simple way. So UV mapping is a technique that we have right now, and it's been along in the industry for a long time. Uh, I don't think it's going to go anywhere, anywhere in the, in the next couple of years. So uh, UVs in the 3D world are a 2D representation of a 3D object. Okay, and the only reason why they're called UVs is because the letters X, Y, and C are already occupied. So UV does not stand for anything. It's just like the next two coordinates that we have. So it's the U coordinate or U coordinate, which is uh, horizontal, and the V coordinate, which is vertical. Uh, I know that V stands for vertical, but it's it's. I think that's just a coincidence because I've been looking around and no one explains why they're called UVs. It's just like the next letters that they had available. So um, for games, for cinematics, for everything that we do, we are going to be using UVs because we project textures into those 2D maps and then we fold those maps on top of our character. Now, we don't actually fold the maps. That happens automatically. Uh, that's, that's just one of the properties that geometry has assigned to it once we start uh, uh, doing this sort of process. Now, the trick that I'm going to show you here, and if you've been sticking around uh, throughout our videos, you know that I drop some very nice little informations here and there. So the thing we're going to be talking about is something very cool called UDEMs. UDEMs are a very specific way in which we can UV our characters. The UV creation process is the same, but the organization is a little bit different. Usually when we work with UVs, we always tell the students, keep your UV maps on the zero to one box, right? Like keep everything here because that's where Maya is going to look for the texture. And yes, that's usually what we do. But when we want to do some more like cinematic things, when we want to like really push the texture resolution quite high, we're going to be using something called UDEMs. Now, UDEMs are not something out of this world. They're not completely difficult or different. If you're a beginner and you've never used UVs, using UDEMs is really not that complicated. So I'm going to keep it really, really simple for you guys. We're only going to be using probably like three UDEMs or something. It's just something simple. But as you can see, we can go like really, really crazy with the amount of UV, UDEMs. Now, uh, the only uh, downside to using UDEMs is the fact that we're going to get multiple uh, texture sets. So for each square that you have here, you're going to get another set of textures, meaning that if you normally have a 4K set of textures, like four textures at 4K, which is about 50 megabytes, uh, if you have 10 UDEMs, then you're going to have not 50 megabytes, you're going to have... Uh, 500 megabytes, right? So the texture amount of space that you're going to be requiring is going to be bigger and bigger and bigger. 
uh, which is not bad. Usually for, for productions, it's, it's something that we normally use. Uh, especially if you're going to go for like some really, really high cinematic qualities. But it's not something that you use in games. Games do not use UDEMs, or at least not in the way that we see UDEMs in the in the production uh, pipeline. So, but before we jump into UDEMs, we need to talk about just like the basic UV creation. And here's what we're going to do. Anytime I like to start or I'm going to work with my UDEMs, the first, or UVs, the first thing or the first elements that I like to do is I like to clean things up. And as you can see, this is really, really dirty right now. So... I'm, I'm going to go piece by piece. We're going to be exploring the different ways in which we can UV uh, things. And then we're going to, uh, I'm going to explain how to uh, solve everything. So for instance, this guy right here, as you can see, this guy is, is clean. It's a, it's a relatively clean uh, mesh. One thing I am going to do is I'm going to smooth it permanently. This is not something that I do every time, but since we established at the beginning of this series that we wanted this to be a sort of like cinematic shot for the for the whole thing, I don't mind having uh, high resolutions or uh, yeah high resolutions. I'm gonna go mesh. And I'm gonna say smooth, and this will permanently smooth the element into a nicer shape. We can even smooth it one more time once we go into render, which is gonna help us uh, get a nicer silhouette. But for now, this is good. And the process I use for UVs is super simple. I go into UV, I delete the UVs to make sure that we don't have any UVs. So like the object again, go into UVs. I'm going to do a planar mapping. It doesn't really matter which axis you do. Um, usually I like to actually change this to camera based projection right here. So in the UV planar options, I go into the option box and I hit this uh, bounding box camera, hit apply and we get this. Now you're seeing this checker pattern. And the reason you're seeing that uh, in case you don't see it on your own is because up here, I got this thing turned on the checker pattern. And I believe I also have a view. I think I. There we go. Was that the one? I, I believe I, I, I changed something in the past couple of days. And that's showing that thing right there. Is this the grid? No. I can't remember which one. I mean, it's not really that big of a deal. We can just turn this thing on and, and that should be fine. But I'm not sure what. What is it? Hmm. Can't remember where I turned that on. That's fine. So now what I'm going to do is. Uh, oh, yeah, it's this one right here. Yeah, there we go. That very stupid option <laughs> right there. So I'm just going to turn that off. I'm going to grab this guy and I'm going to go into bonus tools. Sorry, uh, UV. And I'm going to say 3D cut and show UV tool. This is the tool that I use to create my UVs. And basically what you want to do when you're uh, creating your UVs is you want to think about where would you cut this object? Is If we were doing like this sort of like paper craft thing where, where we would like flatten everything, where would, would we want to cut? And the answer is usually areas where you're not going to see the cut. So for instance, in here, and of course on the other side, and probably one cut all the way along the belly like this. See? Now, I know from experience that this sort of shapes where they go in and out, they don't unfold nicely. So I'm going to add one extra cut right there and one extra cut right here. That's going to help my uh, divisions. Now, this is fierce over here also um, or also need to be cut. So I'm just going to cut them in half. Even if the seam is slightly visible, it shouldn't matter. And I'm going to show you some tricks uh, similar to what we did on the, on the grenade to hide those elements. Now, some of you might say, hey, do, do we really need to like modify things in here where we created like this like super weird shape to hold the edge there? And the answer is no. Thanks to technology and the evolution of softwares, we now have a tool called Unfold 3D. So I'm going to go here into my UV map, UV editor. I'm going to right click and select the UV shells, all of them. And then I'm going to go into modify and I'm going to hit Unfold and I'm going to click the option box. I need to make sure that Unfold 3D is turned on. Make sure that it's turned on because I have a lot of my students have this issue where their Unfold is not working and because the plugin is not loaded in. So to load this plugin, in case this is not loaded in, you're going to go into Windows, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager, and we're going to go all the way down to Unfold 3D right there. So you can see I have it set to auto load so that we load this uh, a little bit faster. Now we're just going to grab all of these UV shells and hit Apply. And again, with the magic of, uh, of Maya, we're going to get this very nice flat shape right here. This nice lines right here, the caps, and then the little circles. 
So now, as you can see, my UV is properly cut and properly unfolded. It's not properly laid out yet, but we're we're in a good position. I'm actually gonna wait until the very end until we have all of the pieces ready to do the, the layout because I wanna make sure that all of them fit in the same uh, place. Now, this guy, uh, for instance, the, the glass uh, uh, light bulb, we also need to UV, even though it's gonna be a glass surface, if we want to add like dirt and stuff, we, we need to like change certain things and we need to have a little bit of a UV. So I am gonna do the same thing, UV, delete UVs, UV, planar mapping, there we go. Same deal here, we have that like grid turn on. And then I'm gonna go UV, 3D cut and so UV tool, let's cut right here. And in this case, we don't have a particular like a, like it, it's like a, it's, it's not a hollow shape or like a, a full shape, right? So so since we're gonna have two like covers, we, we can't just like unfold there and that's it. We, we also need to add a cut line down here to make sure that this flattens out into some sort of like a plane. So we're gonna grab both of them and we're gonna say modify and unfold. And look at that. So this one, nicely unfolded. This one, I mean, it's not the end of the world if we leave it like that. As you can see, there's a little bit of distortion towards this border right here. Again, it's not the end of the world, but if you wanna be super, super clinical about this and make sure that everything is looking the best in the best possible way, you definitely wanna add one more cut right there. So now when we unfold, modify, unfold, we're gonna get this. Okay, so on this area, everything is gonna look very nice. On this area, yes, of course, we're gonna have the seam line. I'm gonna show you how to hide it later on on the, on the texturing phase. Um, let's go back here. There we go. What did we lose? It seems like we lost something. There we go. Do we have two of this? No. Okay. So yeah, eventually we're gonna make that a glass. I, I think I overwrite, overwrit, or probably changed something there. But that's fine. So let's go to the wings. So I'm gonna grab this wing right here. And if you remember, the wings is, is actually like parented, right? So for instance, the membrane, this is just a plane. So one very quick way in which we can UV this is UV planar, and we're gonna select Y axis so that we do the projection from the top like this. And that's it. So I think it's the projection that's messing up the um, the materials, which is fine. It's not that 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 bad. So this guy as well, UV planar, and there we go. Now we're gonna go with the with the main frame right here. I'm actually gonna unparent this thing for just a second, and then I'm gonna grab this guy right here. And remember when we were modeling this guy, and I told you, hey, we're gonna grab like this line right here, uh, and that's gonna be helpful for us later on. Well, here's where this is gonna come into place. I'm gonna grab faces, and I'm gonna grab all the top faces using that middle line as a reference. Got it? So that middle line is my reference. I grab all the top faces, and I'm gonna say UV, planar mapping, and I'm just gonna hit apply. And then I'm gonna grab all the lower faces and do the same thing, apply. So now, if we check the UV, we're gonna have this. And if we just unfold, modify, unfold, voila we get both of our membranes right here. Some of you might be asking, well, why, why didn't we do the, the same trick we did before? Just like grab this line and double click and cut it. Well, because we would have to go to each individual hole and do the same thing. It's not, it, it's doable, of course, it's just gonna take longer. And remember, one of the tricks about being a 3D artist is you wanna be as efficient and um, fast as possible. So if you can do a couple of tricks here and there to make sure that you speed up your process, you're good to go. And talking about speeding up the process, I'm gonna grab this guy so like this guy right here, as you can see, this one does not have a UV. Let's let's parent the membrane as well. So there we go. So grab that the membrane that does have that has that has the UVs, and then this one that does not. And I'm gonna go into Edit Mesh. Sorry, Mesh Transfer Attributes right here. I'm gonna transfer the UV sets, all the UV sets, and I'm gonna uh, sample the topology and hit Apply. And as you can see, we just pretty much copy and pasted the UVs to this side. And again, saving time. We want to make sure we're efficient. And we want to make sure that we do things in a, in a nice way. Now, this one, do we need to UV this coil right here? No, because that guy is, is just going to be emitting light. So there's not going to be any texture to it. If we want the coil to be off at uh, any specific point, then maybe we would want to have a texture. But uh, in our particular case right now, I don't think we need that. Uh, let's go for this one, because this one's a little bit trickier. So I do remember combining these two things. What I'm gonna do is I am gonna delete half of it, go to this guy. Why half? Because we can mirror it, and that way we just save a little bit of time. I'm gonna say UV, delete UVs, and then UV, planar mapping, 
Uh, let's open up our UB editor again and turn off the checkerboard so that we can see things a little bit clearer. And I'm gonna go uh, by island. So I'm gonna select this sphere right here. And as you can see, the sphere, that, that one doesn't even need a cut. It, it's already cut, so, so that's gonna work perfectly. The other object that we need is uh, this like torus right here. And toruses are really fun to cut. It's actually very easy. UV, 3D cut, you're gonna grab any ring and then any inner ring, like this one right here. And that's enough, that, that, that's gonna flatten everything out. The tricky one is gonna be this one right here. Oop, this one. This like half uh, circular thing that we created. Now one um, quick way or relatively quick way in which we could try and, and do this is similar to what we did uh, before. So if I grab like all of the faces on the inside, try to grab all of the faces on the, on the inside. You know what? I'm gonna do something here. I am gonna say uh, mesh separate. I'm gonna separate them for now. That way we can work on this one first. So I wanna select like all of the all of the faces on the inside first. So let's say from here all the way to here. There we go. And then from here all the way through here. I'm just clicking with shift and then shift double click to where I wanna uh, land. And that way I'm, I'm selecting all of them. So as you can see, since, since all of them are, are kinda connected in a loop, I'm it should be fairly easy to just select all of this. That This is where topology comes like really, really into play. If you have a clean model doing UVs, not only is it gonna be a lot faster, it should be fairly pain-free. Not to mention that of course, having a topology is completely necessary for, um, for good animation or good deformation for animation. So there we go. So as you can see, I've selected all of the faces on the back here, and then I'm just gonna say UB and I'm gonna planar map them as well. So that pretty much divides the two shells. And now when I do an unfold, modify unfold, you can see that we get the outer shell and the inner shell, which is exactly what we want, right? So now uh, we're also gonna do the unfold on the other two elements. So let's grab all of them. You can actually grab like several objects at the same time. So UV, oh, well, one thing, I am gonna add a smooth here. So mesh smooth to the outer torus and mesh smooth to this thing right here. There we go. Because the UVs do take into account the smoothness of an object. So if you, if you unfold an object that's very low poly and then just smooth it out, UVs might distort and create some weird uh, things. So it's usually a good idea to to smooth them before you unfold so that the unfold gives you the, the best uh, possible um, interaction. So now there's three things I'm just gonna combine into a single object and now we can mirror this, shift right click, mirror, and I'm gonna mirror on the X axis of the world on negative X and I'm gonna hit apply. There we go. So eyes ready. One thing I like to do to, to, to see whether or not I'm, I'm uh, moving at a good pace, let's do a the history real quick is I like to create a new layer and I'm going to call this layer UB ready. That's a bad capitalization, but that's fine. And I'm just going to right click, select the object, right click and add selected objects and turn this uh, layer off. So that way I'm going to just start adding objects there. And I don't that I know that any object that's in there has already been uh, UV. Like that, so we're just missing all of this, all of this ones. So let's move a little bit, uh, well, not faster, but I'm just gonna do a quick trick here. So for instance, this guy is right here. Um, very similar thing, like I really don't need this guy. Same deal, I don't need that guy or that guy or that guy because we're just gonna be mirroring. And um, um, yeah, so this guy has it, it has an angle and that's, a, that's an issue. So let's fix that real quick. I'm just gonna grab the two faces right there and say, uh, add mesh poke. And now the UVs for these guys are really, really simple. It's pretty much a cylinder. So I'm just gonna grab UV, planar mapping, and then UV. Well, I, mean, I am gonna smooth them. Smooth, there we go, it looks nicer. So UV, 3D cut, we're gonna cut the cap, the other cap, and any line that's going through the, through the middle, which is kind of hidden, like that one right there. Gonna say UV, UV editor, and I'm just gonna say um, modify, unfold. 
as you can see, straight line all along, which is going to be perfect for us. Now, here's the deal. What can we do with this guys right here? Well, we we did change the topology on this guy. We we added the poke and the triangles and we smoothed it out. So this guy's no longer share that. To be honest, one of the easiest things you could do is just delete this guys. And since we know they're the same as this guy right here, we just duplicate. We just duplicate, position it where it's supposed to be, and scale it in or out depending on how how big or not we want the, the thing to be. So again, duplicate. We snap it where it's supposed to be. Let's move forward like that. Duplicate. And we just move this guy like this so that it's sitting on the ground. Perfect. Now, one thing we are going to do, each of this has its own individual element, and we're going to have to respect that. So we just need to mirror uh, to the other side. So grab all of these guys. Let's delay history, freeze transformation, right click, shift, and I'm going to mirror. Uh, world x negative and um, we are going to combine it with the original and we're just going to hit apply and there we go we got all the other little antennas uh, we grab all of the antennas quick trick to um, rename these things up here right at the side of the of the render stuff there's usually this thing called the absolute transform if you click there and you change this to rename you're going to be able to change this and call this antenna underscore Antenna underscore is going to be antenna underscore one two three four five six or one two three four. The only thing is this one we need to rename to zero. Uh, and yeah, that that's it. So just like grab all of those little antennas right there, right click, and we add the selected objects. So little by little, we're moving forward. Let's go with this guy right here. Very simple thing. I'm also going to smooth permanently, so I'm going to say mesh smooth, and we're going to do UV, delete UVs, UV. Planar mapping. The reason why I delete the UVs is just to make sure that there's no extra information hidden in the in the object. Sometimes uh, objects inherit uh, things from their like primitives. We don't want that. So double click here. Double click here. We need a cut right around the border, which is right here, and on the other side, like right here. It's just like like a coin. So it's it's very simple. Just go around the object, cut through the object, and then just modify unfold. Look at that, beautiful. That, that's it, <laughs> that's all we need. So this guy, uh, let's rename it since since we're already cleaning all of this stuff. So let's call this uh, light bulb uh, socket. And we have to select that. Now this guy right here. And this is fun because remember this guy and this guy, they're the same thing, right? We just scaled them and created something uh, a little bit more different. So, or a little bit different. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna smooth all of them, mesh. Uh, smooth to get like this nice shape and then this guy I'm gonna UV planar mapping grab the guy UV 3d cut and so UV tool and same thing just uh, one on the cap there I am gonna use um, actually since this is very flat I think we can get away with just that one cut let's let's take a look I'm just gonna go UV UV editor and try to modify unfold this thing yeah that works fine as you can see the there's not a lot of distortion. There's a little bit of distortion, but this is going to be hidden. So I, I don't really mind. And uh, this saves me a couple of cuts. So that's perfect. And since these guys both share the same topology, even though the scale is different, we should be able to transfer one attribute to the other. So I'm going to say uh, mesh transfer attributes. And then from this and this mesh transfer attributes. And just to double check that this actually did work, we check the UV editor. Yep, yeah, you can see both of, both of them, like all of them, there's one individual set for each uh, for each piece. So they all share the same one. I am gonna combine this object. It, it makes no sense to have it as a, as a separate piece. So I'm just gonna combine this object. I'm gonna call this a uh, light bulb. Uh, let's call this uh, base. Right click and add the select object. And there we go. Let's grab the whole body. Very similar, the whole body to the, um, what was it? The, the torso, right? It's, it's like this pot. So I'm going to go into UV, planar mapping, and then UV, 3D cut. We're going to cut there. Actually, we can go there. We can go here. And then one across on the bottom side. I am going to smooth this out. So I'm just going to smooth this before we do the, the unfold. So I've mentioned that's going to help with the distortion. So modify, unfold. There we go. That's, that's perfect. 
So this, we're going to delay history for its transformation, and then we're going to call this Firefly Torso. Right click, and we add the select object. And as you can see, little by little, we're, we're moving on and we're, we're getting closer to the, the final thing here. So um, yeah, let's just keep moving. This is the, the next piece. Uh, actually, we can do the, the little beak right here. So this beak, a little bit interesting, right? Because uh, we have, again, like an inner side and an outer side. So same process, UV, planar mapping. And we're going to say UV, 3D cut and sew. Let's do all this border. Um, and I'm probably going to cut like through here just to relax. That way we're going to have like the, like the cap on the back. And I probably want to have this on the bottom or the back or the front as well. So I think this is going to unfold nicely. Let's take a look. Modify unfold. Yeah, it's not bad. I, I do think we need an extra cut here somewhere. Probably, I'll probably. Mm. Like that edge right there. Because the most important part is this front part right here. Oh, I know, I know where. So I'm going to go UV, 3D cut, and so UV tool, and I'm going to cut through here, through this border. There we go. So now we're going to have like the inner side, the outer side, and then a couple of caps. So modify, unfold. There we go. That's, that's more like what I was looking for. Uh, do we need to smooth this out? Probably, yeah. So I'm just going to smooth this out as well. And then we need to unfold again. So modify, unfold. So see see how it changed? It, it looked like it didn't change that much, but it definitely changed and helped us with the, with the distortion. So that's important. Uh, this guy, we're going to smooth this. Uh, smooth. And then we select the first one, the second one, and we're going to say uh, edit mesh, or sorry, mesh transfer attributes. And we just need to check the UVs again to make sure that this guy, yep, it has the new UVs that we have on the back. So both of them, I'm probably going to combine as well. Delay history, first transformation, I'm going to call this uh, pincers. So let's call this Firefly Pincers. Right click and we add the select object. There we go. This guy, easy as well. UV, planar mapping. And we're going to say UV. Um, 3D cut and sew UV edges, we cut there, we cut back here, and we cut on the bottom side right there. UV, UV editor, we definitely need to smooth this, so mesh, smooth, we grab all of the shell and we say modify, unfold. Perfect, that, that's that's great. So this guy, the history, phrase transformation, we call this far, fly, head, right click and we add the selected object this guys do we need to do all of this guys no we only do one side same with this guy let's delete oh careful there since these guys were mirrored we're gonna have to do this so for instance let, i'm gonna just combine all of those spheres to again make it a little bit faster uh, i think this were mirrored so we should be able to erase those there we go. So that also reduces the amount of things, right? Sometimes when, when we're working on 3D and uh, and we see all the work that we need to do, we can uh, feel overwhelmed. Uh, so if you do this sort of like simplification techniques, uh, it should be a lot easier. Now, if you remember, all of these guys, uh, or especially this like uh, sockets right here, they were the same uh, shape or, or not the same shape, but we, we used the same like sort of like, uh, yeah, basic things for, for all of these guys. So we should be able to... Um, export those uh, UVs as well. So this is sphere right here, this little like a uh, connection point. I'm just gonna go uh, UV, planar. Uh, we definitely need to smooth. And I'm just gonna say UV, 3D cut, and we're gonna cut right there. I'm gonna grab all of the other spheres, all of these guys. And I think, oh, they're not, they're, since we combine them, they're not technically the same topology, so I'm gonna have to do a manual, um, UV process here, so that's fine. I mean, so take a look at this, just half, 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 mesh, smooth, UV, UV editor, modify, unfold. There we go, got everything ready there. 
So this, we're going to call them, uh, we'll just call them like torso rivets. I'll call this, we're going to combine a lot of things. So uh, it's fine. There we go. Let's move to this whole thing here which again, fairly easy. Important that we smooth things out. So anything that really changes, like if you see something change like drastically between mode one and three, you definitely want to smooth it out. So for instance, this one, not really. Uh, same for that sphere, not really. This sphere, not really. But these two guys, they do definitely change. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna do the first one, mesh, and I'm gonna smooth this out. Same for this guy, mesh and smooth out. There we go. So now this guy, the easiest way to do this, since this is very flat, it's just planar mapping. Let's do the history. And then UV, 3D cut through the middle. I'm actually going to go a little bit lower in this case. Right now, no, let's let's do the middle point. Middle and middle. I was going to go a little bit lower, but it, it, it might deform weirdly. And, um, and I don't want that. So UV, UV editor, modify, unfold. And there we go. We got two. Sides to the same piece, grab one, grab the other. See how the other one has like messed up UVs. I was going to say edit mesh, sorry, uh, mesh and transfer attributes. And there we go. We just inherited the same amount of elements. And we're going to be able to texture them differently. Like sharing um, attributes in this way, like transferring attributes in this way, does not mean that we're, um, uh, what's the word, uh, obligated to, to use the same techniques or anything. It's, it's, they're going to be their own thing. So let's go with this uh, piece right here. This is a sphere, but it's uh, it has like two sides to the sphere. So the best way would be to go here in the border. Well, well before that, UV, planar mapping, of course. Let me turn this off just to visualize the colors a little bit better. 3D cut, we go there, let's turn this off. So that's one cut right there. I usually like to cut something back here just to give it a little bit more uh, deformation. And we're going to say modify unfold. Uh, what I mean by that is usually when you have an object, especially spherical objects or objects that are really organic, really round, uh, no matter how hard you try to flatten them out into a, a plane, you're always going to have distortion. That's the issue we have, for instance, with, with the world map. I'm, I'm not sure if you've seen this. Uh, there's there's like a video rolling around in the Internet talking about like the world map uh, wrong, how it's wrong. And, uh, and the reason that they explain that this is wrong is that we usually, like the, the world map that we usually see, this one right here, uh, is distorted. Like the way they transfer the, the proportions of the countries is distorted and, and it makes it seem like countries are way bigger or way smaller than they actually are. And uh, if we were to see the actual proportions, this is a little bit closer to what we would expect. However, this is very ugly looking, right? Like no one wants to see this sort of thing. Like this green, the, the green one, that's the, the proper proportions. You can see how big Africa actually is compared to like uh, Greenland. And, uh, and in the normal one, that is this uh, black outline that we see, we see that it's really, really big. The same thing happens to Mexico. Like Mexico is actually a really, really big country. And when they change this in, in proportion, it, it doesn't look as big, right? Same for South America. Look how, how much area it loses, right? So, so that's, that's, just, uh, that's just the problem that we have. When we jump from 3D to 2D, we're losing a whole dimension. So we, of course, lose certain proportions. By adding more cuts to the UV, though, we do get a little bit of a better deformation. So that's, that's what I did here for this uh, particular object. The only downside to that, of course, is you're going to have more cuts. And if you don't know how to hide them properly, then you could get, um, what's the word? You could get some uh, weird uh, seams every now and then. So these are just spheres. So I'm just going to cut in half. And this one, UV, 3D cut, and cut in half. There we go. So now all of these objects are ready. Let's go there. This plate right here, very important. This is what I was just mentioning. So I'm just going to smooth this first. I'm just going to smooth this. There we go. So this is now the smoothed version. I'm going to go UV. Let's do a planar mapping. And then we're going to say UV, 3D cut, and we're going to go to the lower border here. So if I were to just cut this like this, like just that, like the top part and the bottom part, yes, I would save myself from a lot of deformation, but I'm also going to get some weird deformation here in the corners. So one thing I can do is I can actually cut the corners a little bit here right there, 
there and there that is indeed gonna add an extra cut to my um, to my UVs, but it's gonna make it look nicer. You're gonna see how in just a second. I'm just gonna say uh, modify and unfold, and look at that. Similar to when you build like a paper craft uh, dice uh, that it has those little like uh, flaps that you use to like tuck them in and, and form the whole figure. It's kind of like doing that. It's like helping the the unfold process uh, get a, a nicer result. So so that's why we do that. Uh, we're just gonna delete this. And we're just gonna uh, change this to chest plate. Right click and we add the select block. There we go. Very, very close to finishing. It's just this remaining thing. So um, I'm just gonna grab the whole thing. Shift P to unparent everything. I can grab all of them at the same time and just do UV and uh, planar mapping all of them. But then I need to individually cut the, the UV edges. You can see not a, not a lot of changes here. So I, I do think I'm actually going to smooth this one out. There we go. So UV, 3D cut. We're going to cut a cap, like a cap over here, and through the middle on the, on the downside like that. That's perfect. This one right here. Let's see if it changes quite a bit. It does a little bit. So I'm just going to smooth. UV, 3D cut cap cap and then down down there uh, this one is the final one it changes quite a bit as well so smooth UV 3d cut we're gonna cut uh, probably cut here and then in this case we're gonna go down here as well and now the cool thing is you can actually grab all of them at the same time Select all the UV shells and say modify and unfold. And there we go. All of them uh, have been unfolded except for this thing right here. Do we have a duplicate? Oh, we have a duplicate. Okay. So how do we know which one is the, the duplicate and which one is not the duplicate? How do we save this? Oh, well, very easy. If we select all of these guys and we go into the UV shells, which we know that are this one, this one, and this one, we know those three are the good ones. And if we grab this ones right here, we can move them out. Oh, so what do we have here? This, my friends, is a very common mistake. Or not mistake, it's a very common situation where for a weird reason, we duplicated certain geometries. So for instance, I'm just gonna go into object mode. I'm gonna try and delete them. Sometimes that does work, sometimes it doesn't. So that one, for instance, that one's, that one's clean. So this one's the dirty one, and then that one's clean. So this one's the bad one. So let's see. Just yeah, yeah. Okay, that seems to solve it. Now we just zero out the transformation. So make sure you don't have any duplicated geometry that could cause a lot of issues later on. But it's very easy. You're gonna pinpoint when that happens uh, thanks to the UVs because um, UVs are very um, <laughs> they're very informative in that sense. You're gonna see where where things uh, are working, where things are not working. So this one right here, if I remember correctly, um, this one did have uh, the same topology. So that means that we can just uh, like smooth them. The smooth and the smooth. Now I'm gonna grab uh, like this guy right here. I'm just gonna say, uh, well, both of them, UV. Let's do planar mappings for both. There we go. Now this guy, UV, oh, I actually want to unparent this for just a second. Let's unparent this guys, there we go. So let's isolate this guy and I'm gonna go UV, 3D cut and so UV tool, we're gonna cut right here and right here and down the back like this. And I know that this guy is gonna unfold nicely because we've been following the rules and the, and the process. So yeah, that works perfect. Grab one, grab the other, mesh, and we're gonna, uh, we're just gonna transfer attributes. Now this one right here, I am actually gonna combine and combine this guy. And then on this guy, I am gonna isolate UB, 3D cut and so UB tool. You can see, actually those two already have UBs and they're not bad, <laughs> they're working really nice actually. So it's just, this one that we need to cut, cut, and cut. The only thing I don't like is that the seam is on the top. 
but it's not a big deal. I'll show you how to how to fix that later on. Just grab this, this mesh tools, or sorry, uh, mesh, and we transfer attributes. And now everything should be properly UV. Uh, well, actually, the UVs that we had before, they're not that good. So I'm just going to say modify on fold, and let's see if that fixes it. It kind of did and kind of didn't. So I'm just going to freeze transformation, give it another go. That's a little bit better. We're going to be looking at uh, one final tool that we still haven't used. That's going to fix all of our remaining issues. So there we go. Now this guy, I'm actually going to, uh, where is it? It's right there. I'll, I'll leave it there. It's, it's easy to, to find. I'm going to move it to the light setup though, just to, to hide it. I, I don't want to see it. And let's just press H2 to hide that as well. So I know that in the light setup, we have that light bulb. So now I'm going to bring everything back here and I'm going to start, uh, of course, um, mirroring all the things that we are missing. So all of these guys, this guys, this guys, this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy, uh, this little sphere right there as well. Right uh, shift, right click, mirror, option box, X negative, make sure everything is working fine. And we should have everything ready. So our character is now ready. We have everything that we need in regards to the UVs. However, if we take a look at the UVs now and we go UV, UV editor, you're gonna see that it's a complete mess. Like we can't work with this. And not only is this a complete mess, each individual part has a different uh, density. You can see some of them are really, really small. Some of them are a little bit bigger. Some of them are like not working at all. Like this one right here. Actually, why is that not working? Let's transfer the attributes. There we go. So for some reason we lost the attributes right there or do we have a duplicate? No, we don't. So, okay. So how do we clean everything? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the objects and I'm going to say delete history and freeze transformation. I want to make sure everything is set to um, just like clean. One thing I want to do is I want to start grouping all of the elements that are going to be part of like the same sort of like section, if you wish. So for instance, all of this guys, all of the, of the legs, I'm going to say combine. And I'm just going to call this new object Firefly Lex. Eventually, a rigger can break everything up and, and just rename and do whatever it needs to do in order to make everything work. You could actually um, like just combine everything and, and that could also work. I'm actually going to do that. Well, why am I not doing it? Usually when texturing, you want to combine everything. And later on for rigging, that's when you start separating things up and, and just changing them. If I were to do a rig for games, for instance, I'll probably leave everything combined just to make sure that uh, things are, uh, they have a single skin cluster. But when you have like a, a very complex object, having multiple skin clusters is not, it's not that bad. Uh, but in this case, I think, I think it, it wouldn't hurt. And since we're going to be using UDIMS, it, it wouldn't hurt to have everything as a, as a single object. So I'm just going to grab everything here. I'm going to say combine. Now this is a single object. It's 157,000 uh, triangles, which is not bad. It's 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 perfectly reasonable. Uh, I do think I would like to grab like this faces and this faces and smooth them out. So mesh, smooth. That's the only area that I saw that's looking or was looking a little bit weird. Everything else is is looking fine. So I'm just gonna grab everything here. I am gonna say UV, UV editor. I'm going to do one final unfold. Now, this might take a little while because now it has to do... Uh, oh, there we go. So we have N-guns. Very important. That's an issue. So let's find the N-guns. Quick way to find the N-guns. You're going to go into Mesh, Cleanup, Option Box. You're going to select faces with more than four sides right here. And I'm going to select the matching polygons. Hit Apply. Where are you? It's not there. That's weird. It gave me this... Uh, like uh, it says that there's non-manifold geometry. I'm just going to say fix. Hopefully it doesn't destroy the model. Non-manifold could be other things, not, not, not only handguns, uh, but it's, it's weird that we have non-manifold. We shouldn't have. Let's just wait for the unfolding. And there we go. So nothing changed. Uh, object se seems to be working fine. Let's turn this off. I don't see any weird geometry or anything, so I think we're good. Uh, it seems like the light bulb is a little bit lower than it should be. Oh, there you go. No, that's just the one. I thought that was some weird stuff. So I'm just going to double click and select all of these areas. Just 
lower them a little bit so they are where they're supposed to be. There we go. Now I am going to grab the whole thing, UV, and I'm going to show you this little secret. This, my friends, and if you've been sticking around all this long, I know that UVs can be a little bit boring. I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to record the whole thing, but I want to show you like the true things, like how it actually works in the real world. This is what we uh, face every day when we're doing objects, right? Like we need to clean up, we need to do the modeling, and then we need to do the UVs. That's, that's part of the deal. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you one very nice tr trick, one very nice tool as well. This tool is called a layout tool, but the layout has some secrets. So the layout tool will allow us to, as the name implies, lay out this whole thing nicely in as many UDIMs as we want or in as many squares as we want. There's a couple of things you want to change. First, you want to make sure that you have the Unfold3D layout uh, function on. I'm going to change the shell pre-rotation. I'm going to select this to vertical. I want to make sure that all the shells are aligned vertically. So if I ever if I ever need to add like a texture or something, it will follow the vertical axis. This is just personal, personal preference. Very important, I am going to scale all the shells so that they preserve the 3D ratios. That means that if we have a very big 3D object, the shell is going to be big. If we have a small 3D object, the UV shell is going to be small. Then I'm going to be texturing eventually at 4K. And I want to have a shell padding is the distance I want in between each shell. I'm going to say four pixels is usually good. And the tile padding, I usually leave as, at four as well. So I'm going to make sure that there's always at least four pixels away from the border of the image and four pixels away from each shell. And as I mentioned, we're going to be using UDIMs. So I'm going to have one, two, and three. I'm going to have three UDIMs right here. And how do UDIMs work? I'm just going to say, hey, I want three horizontal UDIMs. So I'm going to press three there, and I'm going to hit apply. Uh, I'm going to select all of the UV shells. I'm going to hit apply. Now Maya is going to do its magic, and voila. <laughs> all of the shells are now very nicely packed in this three UDIMs that we have right here. As you can see, it tried to make sure every single island was oriented vertically. So again, if I want to add any sort of texture, especially like for this long lines right here, it's going to be very easy to match that. And uh, as you can see, every single piece of the of the little firefly is nicely set up. All the areas share the the same. They don't say they're not sharing the same. They should share the same size here. So if they're not doing that, I can give it another go. Let's let's first um, delay history and freeze transformation again. Sometimes that messes things up. I'm gonna say modify layout. I'm gonna instead of 3D, I'm gonna say UV and hit apply. There we go. That changed a little bit. I think it's having a little bit of a hard time here with the head. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. As you can see, the difference here in the head is not that that bad. But I am a little bit concerned. So let me let me take a look at the head. I'm I'm gonna have to trust Maya on this one. Maybe it's just it, that that's the best way it can find to to pack everything into three. If we were to change this to four UDMs, for instance. Which of course will increase the the amount of uh, of uh, textures and, uh, and the detail as well, but yeah, you can see that the squares no they, they remain the same. That's really weird. Could be due to the deformation, but that's fine. I'm gonna leave it at three right there. So now we're ready to jump into Substance Painter. How are we doing? Okay, we're almost out of time. So I'm just gonna show the like a like a sneak peek of what we're gonna be doing in in uh, in Substance Painter because I I can't uh, I, I don't think we can we're gonna be able to cover the whole uh, texturing process. So once we have this, I'm going to change the character's name to uh, Firefly, just like body. That's fine. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to assign a new material. I'm going to go into Arnold and I'm going to assign a AI standard surface. And this is going to be my, uh, let's call this M Firefly. This is important. This is part of the, of the setup for, for substance. Now we're going to select the whole character here. I'm going to say file, export selection. And uh, we're going to go into our uh, assets folder. I'm going to create a new folder called Firefly. And in here, we're going to export this as an FBX. Now, make sure the triangulate is set to off in case it's set to on. Uh, we don't want to triangulate anything. I'm just going to call this Firefly. And there we go. And we're going to jump into Substance 3D Painter. Uh, this is the new Substance 3D Painter. Some of you might still have the old version, the one from Algorithmic. Uh, if you guys are not aware, Adobe uh, bought Algorithmic two years ago in 2019. 
and uh, they now just released the the actual like Adobe version of of, of things. Uh, you can still like I'm still subscribed to my old algorithmic account, and I can just download this new version, and that's totally fine. In case you want to download this um, Adobe Substance Painter, Substance 3D Painter is called now. Uh, you're gonna have to download the Creative Cloud uh, and install it on your computer. And inside the Creative Cloud, you're gonna be able to find the uh, the 3D stuff. I'm not sure if I can find it right here. Uh, Adobe Substance 3D Painter. There we go. It's this one right here. Um, this, it's twenty dollars a month for the for the painter, the texture uh, set. I think they call it, which is painter, designer, sampler. Uh, if you want to get the stager, which is like a small, like 3D package uh, similar to Maya, not like Maya, but similar to Maya, where you can like assemble a scene and stuff, uh, you can you can get it as well. I think that's like uh, 40 bucks a, a month. Uh, but also, if you are a, if you are a, <laughs> lost the word, a student or a professor, and you're learning, you can get the academic versions here, the education. You're you're entitled to a free uh, of charge. Uh, license for all of the softwares, the painter, sampler, and designer. Uh, you just need to provide proof that you're in an education institution, all the stuff, uh, but you can get your own free version. I personally have the indie version, but it's, it's the same. So I'm going to go here, file, I'm going to press new, and I'm going to select the file that we just, um, that we just used right here. So we're going to go into next to live assets. Firefly, and we're gonna select that Firefly. I'm gonna start at 2K for now. And very important, since we're using UDIMS, I'm gonna select this thing called the Use UV Tile Workflow. And I'm gonna say this first option, preserve UV Tile layout per material and enable painting across tiles. And I hit OK. So with this, our uh, character is now inside of uh, Substance Painter. And the cool thing about this is, as you can see here on our texture set list, we have all the three UDIMS that are now active. If I press F2, or sorry, F1, I'm gonna be able to see all of the UDIMs right here. F2 is for the 3D view, and F3 is the, sorry, F, uh, F1 is double view, and then F2 is 3D view, F3 uh, is 2D view, and F4 is back into, into 3D view. So um, let me show you real quick why UDIMs are so cool. So I'm gonna go here into texture set settings, and I'm gonna hit bake mesh maps. I need to prepare this character. So I'm gonna, let's prepare this at 2K. I'm just gonna say, uh, let's do it two by two and TLIs, and I'm gonna say bake, bake and Firefly. So this is gonna bake the maps that Substance needs to, to work pretty much all around. And here I'm gonna be able to see whether or not things are working nice. As you can see, those legs down there, that's a problem, see that? So we have some issues there with the, with the that's the ambient occlusion, which is gonna be super cool. It's gonna allow us to create some very nice effects. As you can see that that back leg right there has some issues on the UVs. We need to solve that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be jumping back into Maya real quick. Actually, let's cancel since I already detected that there's an issue there. Let's go back oh, into Maya and fix that. So the issue are these objects right here. So I'm just gonna select all of them. I'm gonna say Edit Mesh Extract. It's gonna separate the objects from the from the mesh. So now all of them are separate. Let's see what the hell is going on. So it seems like they were not, those were probably the, the non manifold objects that we had. Maybe there was some duplicate or something. And as you can see, we, we don't have proper UVs. So we just need to do it. I think we, we should be able to, we could try to transfer from one to the other. Although I'm not sure that's the best idea. So I'm just gonna do manually real quick. So let's just delete this guys. Let's see, this guy, oh, this guy seems to be uh, right geometry-wise. So it's just a matter of going UV, 3D cut, we cut, cut, and on the downside right there, there we go. This one, press F to frame, UV, 3D cut, 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 and the downside, there we go. Unfold, working nice. This one, very similar. Double click there. I can also do double click, shift, double click, double click here. I'm just gonna say UV, cut UV edges. That does exactly the same thing. Uh, modify and unfold. There we go. 
Uh, this one seems to be working nicely. And then this one seems to be working nicely as well. So now I'm just gonna uh, grab all of these guys, mirror them, remember shift, oh. grab all of these guys, shift, right click, mirror, just make sure that the axis is correct. Grab all of these guys again. I'm gonna grab first the Firefly, then the rest of the objects. I just grab everything. <laughs> Combine. Well, the history for transformation. Uh, go to UVs again. UV. Everything is unfolded, so I'm just gonna have to do another a new layout. This is of course gonna change the uh, the thing. Um, let's go back to three three sets here. Apply. There we go. Now everything seems to have proper UVs. Make sure to give a final check here. I'm just gonna export this guy, file, export selection. Oh, let's assign the, the material that we have, the M Firefly. Let's change the name to the object. So this object is Firefly. Firefly uh, body, there we go. File, export selection, we export this again. There we go. Now, no need to um, to redo anything here. I'm just going to go edit project configuration and reload the Firefly. This will just change things here. Now we need to rebake the, bake, the, the maps here. Let's go back to 2K. Uh, I'm going to add two by two sa subsampling. Just going to smooth some of the textures. And we're going to say bake M M Firefly. Uh, I'm seeing a little bit of a mistakes on the on the upper side again on those like spheres. Like the fact that I'm not seeing ambient occlusion worries me a little bit. See how there's nothing there? Oh no, it is there. It is there. They were just on a different. Uh, I think they were just on a different tile. So just wait for this to finish. Of course, the, the stronger the computer you have, the, the faster this process is gonna be. This is gonna let us, uh, or, or this is gonna make sure that we're ready to start working on all the, the texture construction. This, are, this is gonna give us all the necessary maps for, um, what's the word for substance to work. I'm not gonna leave without showing you a, a quick overview of how this whole thing is gonna look. Don't worry. So as you can see, looking nice. All the bakes. We don't see any any errors. Oh, we do see a little bit of an error there. That's weird. I thought we'd solve that one. Let's see if it's on the other leg. Must be. So what's happening there? I was pretty sure we we unfolded that, didn't we? UV UV editor. Let's see. Oh, it looks like we didn't unfold. Well. No worries. I'm going to unfold this uh, off camera or, or we'll unfold this as soon as we begin the next unit just to make sure that we are all on the same page. I just want to show you here real quick like what happens if we were to add a smart material to the to the whole thing. So I have this like uh, this is one of the ones that's included like this bronze armor. Like if we add this bronze armor right here. It's automatically going to apply to the whole thing very, very nicely, as you can see here. Now let's add like a like a bronze uh, rust here, and let's add a a black mask, and a typical like dirt layer. And look at this, pretty cool, right? So we we're just starting with the texturing process, and, and with this we already have a very nice. Uh, beginning. Now we're going to be doing some crazy stuff, guys. I'm going to be showing you some very, very cool tricks, but you're going to have to wait until next week. I'm going to be uploading the video on Tuesday, so make sure to stay tuned. Remember, throughout this next five days, so that means that's going to be Friday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, till the next video, through these five days, there's going to be a 90% discount code available in the comments so that, or not in the comments, in the, in the description of the video, so that you can get your hands on the Intro to Maya course. During this uh, course, again, we will go over modeling, subsurface scattering, materials, rendering, dynamics, we see Enclod, we go over a little bit of Bifrost, Mesh, uh, Bullet, 
Uh, we do a little bit of substance painter, curve modeling. There's a lot of things, rendering, post-production. It's it's probably one of the most complete courses that I've uh, um, courses that I've been uh, developing uh, for Nextute. So make sure to check it out. Make sure to make use of the of the code down here. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave us a comment down here if you've been uh, watching all of this series and 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 you like what we're doing. Um, let us know. Let us know what you think. What else you want us to explore? In the next one, we'll be continue with the texturing. Hopefully, get the very nice texture, nice renders, and we'll see where we go from there. Okay. Take care, guys. Make sure you learn something new every day, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye bye.